Welcome to this video on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. The key idea from this video is that the renin angiotensin aldosterone system raises blood pressure. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, that should be the takeaway idea. Okay, so all of this starts um, with the kidney when it is able to recognize a low blood pressure. So the kidneys, make sure you can see that, are able to sense low blood pressure, and I'm going to use BP, or low blood volume. I'll write that out all the way. And they sense it with specialized cells near their uh, glomerular capillary beds called the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So this is sensed by the juxtaglomerular, oops, I'm gonna run out of room here. This is all one word, but juxtaglomerular apparatus. And you can just call that the JGA. So when the JGA senses low blood volume or low blood pressure, then the kidney will release an enzyme called renin. I'm going to use a green highlighter for this arrow. And let's write renin with a green pen. It's called renin because the word renin literally means kidney. Okay, so meanwhile, your lovely liver that's always working hard for you has been making all the plasma proteins that you need. And one of these plasma proteins is called angiotensinogen. So let's put over here that the liver produces plasma proteins. You might remember that the most common one it makes is albumin. But the one that we care about in this video is called angiotensinogen. You can learn a little bit about what it's going to do just by the makeup of the word. Angio means vessel. And then you can see the tensing. So that's gonna, why it's gonna raise blood pressure. But the O-gen tells you that it's currently inactive. It's going to be the generator of something that will raise blood pressure, but it's not yet currently active. So let's use the green to show this arrow that the liver is producing angiotensinogen. And then angiotensinogen is converted by this enzyme renin into angiotensin 1. I'm going to use another blue pen. And angiotensin 1 is not very active. It really needs a little bit more adjustment by yet another enzyme. So we're gonna move down a little bit. And this next enzyme is going to convert angiotensinogen, or sorry, angiotensin one into angiotensin two. Sometimes this is just called A2. So we'll put a blue arrow right here. So this is going to get converted into its potent um, hormone. And it is converted by an enzyme. And we'll put the enzyme in green and try to fit all this in this bubble. It's a big name, angiotensin converting enzyme. But we just call it by the acronym ACE. Now this is made in a few places in the body, but on this paper we're just drawing the lungs because that's where most of the ACE in our body comes from. You can highlight the lungs in yellow. Like so. Okay, so you ready for what it does? You remember it's going to raise blood pressure, right? So it's going to do it in three ways. Let's go like this, and we'll look at these three ways. So the first is it's going to constrict blood vessels. The second is that it's going to make 
a hormone called aldosterone come out of the adrenal cortex, and the third is that it's going to make a hormone called antidiuretic hormone come out of the pituitary gland. So you can go ahead and color this blood vessel pink. And specifically, I'm really thinking about arterioles here because they're the ones that have the biggest impact on raising peripheral resistance to increase blood pressure. Then the adrenal gland, I'll put that in purple, and the pituitary gland we'll put in purple too. Okay, so now get a purple pen, and the first thing I want you to write over here is constricts blood vessels and the way to make the biggest impact on blood pressure in the body is to constrict arterioles because these really regulate blood flow and keep um, the blood in the main arteries if they are constricted and then that is going to raise blood pressure. Then the second thing it's going to do is stimulate, so at angiotensin 2, is going to stimulate the adrenal cortex of the, so this whole thing is the adrenal gland and the outside is the cortex to release another hormone called aldosterone. And that's going to make the kidneys reabsorb more salt and that is going to raise blood pressure. And then the third thing it's going to do is stimulate the posterior pituitary gland up in the brain to release a hormone called antidiuretic hormone. So this is antidiuretic, meaning it's going to make you pee less. That's how it got named. It's an, not, instead of being a diuretic, it's an antidiuretic. And we call this ADH. But you should also know that clinically, I usually see this called vasopressin. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, put these purple in purple boxes. So those are the three effects of angiotensin II, and they all are going to raise blood pressure. So what happens is that first of all, when you constrict arterioles, and we'll put this, um, we'll keep this in purple and go down just a little bit. When you constrict um, arterioles, you will increase peripheral resistance. And that raises blood pressure. because the blood has more resistance to flow. So let's put that in big block letters. Raises blood pressure. Okay, now what about at the kidney? Well, not surprisingly, it's going to have a similar end result of raising blood pressure. And what happens here is that aldosterone causes the kidney to reabsorb more salt. So I'm just going to use an upward arrow here. It increases sodium reabsorption in the kidney. And what that does is increase blood volume. So we'll use another upward arrow. This increases blood volume and that increases peripheral resistance too. So this raises blood pressure. You think you're gonna remember that? <laughs> that everything we're doing here raises blood pressure? So angiotensin, angiotensin II is one of the most powerful hormones to raise blood pressure for these reasons. Okay, then um, here we go again. Use your pink highlighter here for the kidney. I guess I'm using purple for these arrows right here. And continuing with my purple pen, so vasopressin, or antidiuretic hormone, let's write them both so that you start to um, understand that they are the same hormone with two different names. So this will increase water reabsorption at the kidney. 
So instead of retaining more salt, and then water follows salt, that's how the aldosterone does it, it's sort of an indirect, to ra indirect way of raising blood volume. This is a direct way to raise blood volume because you're increasing water reabsorption. So same idea though, this increases blood volume and raises blood pressure. So when I told you that the renin-aldosterone, renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system raises blood pressure, it ultimately does it in three ways. One, by constricting um, arterioles to raise blood pressure. A second way, by causing the kidneys to reabsorb more salt, water follows salt, blood volume goes up, blood pressure goes up. And by increasing the release of ADH, which increases water reabsorption in the kidney to increase blood volume and then to raise blood pressure. So that's really the gist of it. And then the last part of this video is if you're interested in knowing how um, a lot of medications act on this system in order to lower blood pressure. So let's go all the way back up to the top of the page and we'll start at the kidney. You can use an orange pen for this. So we're gonna have some different inhibitors and each one will do an orange. So the first inhibitor would be to inhibit the release of renin. So when I do inhibition, I like to do a block symbol like that. So instead of an arrow, we make a flat line and say, okay, that got inhibited. So renin inhibitors, so these are, are uh, pharmaceutical drugs that can inhibit the release of renin from the kidney, and a famous one, uh, beta blockers, which most people know works on the heart to lower blood pressure that way, also actually works on the kidney to release uh, or to inhibit renin. So this is going to decrease blood pressure. So when I, the down arrow means it's decreasing, BP is blood pressure. So that's one way we could put an orange box around this inhibitory uh, process. Okay, so then the second really popular drug are ACE inhibitors. So again, use your orange pen. And here we want to um, have an arrow inhibiting the release of ACE. We could just do this right here. So here's your line and then the blocking. So ACE inhibitors will re uh, inhibit the this enzyme, so it can't convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2, and in that way, it's going to lower blood, blood pressure. So they block this enzyme, and they decrease blood pressure. And we can use our orange highlighter to put a box around this second inhibitory strategy. Okay, then the third um, medication is when they try to just block the effects directly of angiotensin 2. And that would be um, with, um, let's see, they block the receptors on all of these organs. They block the receptors for angiotensin 2. So I think the easiest way to do this, we'll just put a line here like that. And these drugs are called angiotensin receptor blockers. And we just abbreviate these as ARBs, A-R-B. These will inhibit the activity of A2 because it can't bind to its targets, and in so doing, it will decrease blood pressure. So that's a third drug target. A common way that drugs work by inhibiting a receptor that the hormone binds to. And then we're not done yet, we have two more ways. So you can also take medications that directly inhibit the attachment, or sorry, the act, yeah, the binding of aldosterone to its receptors in the kidney. So in this one, we could put um, oh, just a line like this, a little one, and 
um, I'm going to call it ALDO for short. So ALDO antagonists, these would be drugs that antagonize the binding of ALDO to the kidney, meaning they're going to block it. And these will lower blood pressure. If you're wondering why they have to try so many approaches, I'll also tell you that a lot of times the body finds a way around this. So if you try to block something, it just cranks something else up and then the person still has high blood pressure. So to be perfectly honest, I'm not a huge fan of a lot of these if you can avoid treatment with the drugs, but I know a lot of students need to learn them. So we are putting them on here. Okay, then this one has the funniest name, Vaptans. These are inhibitors of vasopressin. And so these um, inhibit the action and binding of uh, ADH or vasopressin. I'll just put ADH because it fits easier here. And that will decrease blood pressure. So angiotensin II ultimately increases blood pressure. And so all the drugs are then that are trying to work against this renin angiotensin aldosterone system try to work by inhibiting that this process at one or more points along the way. All right, I will see you in the next video.